We are joined now by Pete Nakos. Yes, I know tomorrow is signing day, but listen, the portal never, ever stops, not even for National Signing Day. And Pete, we have a lot to talk about, but we haven't we have not talked to you since Malachi Nelson entered the transfer portal, since KJ Jefferson officially went into the portal. Uh Will Howard visited USC. I mean, a lot going on. Cam Ward and DJ Uyungle still out there following mm-hmm. visits to Florida State. So where is the most interesting story in the portal right now? I just mentioned a bunch of quarterbacks. Do any of those constitute the most interesting story in the portal right now? I, I would say that what happens at Miami to me right now is the most fascinating story in the transfer portal. If they miss out on Cam Ward, is Will Howard already at USC? Where do they go from there? I've heard that Miami would take KJ Jefferson. Does does KJ Jefferson want to go to South Beach? Uh, yeah, Miami is – they're not in a pickle yet, but if you and I talk like next week or before New Year's, we might have a better idea where they stand. Let's be real here. We all want to go to South Beach. Or, well, I'm going to be geographically, geographically correct. Uh, Coconut Grove, much closer to Coral Gables, and very, very nice. But KJ is an interesting one because – one of the schools that, that you mentioned when he entered the portal was TCU. Kendall Bryles was his offensive coordinator at Arkansas. Now has now the offensive coordinator at TCU. That marriage worked very well the first time around. Yep. That seems like there'd be a lot of comfort there. I think it just like wouldn't make too much sense almost, right? Like uh Josh Hoover is the redshirt freshman that TCU played this year, and he was solid. Um but, I mean, the, the, the proof is kind of there, right? Uh, KJ succeeded, had his best two seasons at Arkansas, excuse me, when he was with Kendall and bringing that, those two back together, Reunion and Fort Worth. I mean, that, that could be a recipe for success for uh, Sunny Dykes. But right now, I want to tell you about game time because I'm thinking about the college football playoff. I, I, as much as I enjoy the transfer portal news, I love the drama of signing day, but – There's some big, big games coming up. We got the Rose Bowl. We got the Sugar Bowl. We got the Quick Lane Bowl and the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. We're going to pick those later in the show. Did you know, with game time, you can get into that that Guaranteed Rate Bowl, which is a chase field. It's where the Diamondbacks play in Phoenix. So that is Kansas UNLV. I'm telling you right now, that could be one of the more fun games of the year. And if you're looking on the app and you're like, wait, this is a baseball field. Because remember, they show you the vantage point that you would get from your from your seats. You're like, this is ba- yes, it's a baseball field. So you're going to have to imagine the football field on that one. The quick lane bowl, meanwhile, Minnesota Bowling Green, you can get in for a buck. One dollar gets you into Ford Field for the quick lane bowl. Slightly more than one dollar if you'd like to see Alabama and Michigan in the Rose Bowl or Texas and Washington in the Sugar Bowl, but those are the big ones. And I can help you out there. Use the promo code STAPLES and get $20 off your first game time purchase. So download that game time app. Find the game you want. Couple taps. You got your tickets. Use the promo code STAPLES for $20 off your first purchase. So we talked about USC a little bit. Will Howard visited. You put in an RPM prediction for Will Howard to USC. Malachi Nelson, who was the number one quarterback recruit in the 2023 class, then enters the portal. He was supposed to be the future at USC. Clearly not. That That's when it's, it's interesting because I've watched people kind of react to that. And it, it seems like the folks who don't follow this stuff that closely assume that, oh, it must mean USC is burning down. The, the star quarterback recruit is leaving. This to me seems like Lincoln Riley saying, I would rather have Will Howard starting for me than – Malachi Nelson. Yeah, I, 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 everyone wanted Malachi to work at LA, right? Like I talked to some people around Malachi, like Reggie Bush wanted Malachi to like work in USC. And I just don't think the marriage was going to be successful the way things are trending. And I mean, let's be honest, Andy, the reason why he went in was USC feels really good about where they stand with Will Howard. Um, and, and when he went in and it was right after that visit. Um, but, yeah, I just don't think it was ever going to be the perfect marriage, the way the season progressed, the way they feel about Malachi's development. Um, Lincoln really felt like he needed to go get a quarterback, and now Malachi is going to try to go find a new home wherever that might be. Well, and the other thing is you can kind of tell what's going on by who jumps in 
yep. and offers in these cases. And I'll give you an example. Here's an example. Like Tackett Curtis, the linebacker leaving USC, he jumps in the portal. Like Ohio State's in there right away. Uh, Wisconsin, who is another one of his recruiting finalists, is in there. But then you, I, I believe LSU is in there. He's a, he's a Louisiana guy. Like th th those level of schools jumping in immediately. That's not necessarily what you saw with Malachi when he jumped in. No, I mean, even bring up Damani Jackson right now. It's going to be like yeah. Alabama, two of the biggest brands right now in college football. And then you go to Malachi, and uh, by no means is he scraping for destinations, but it isn't exactly like every top 10 schools lining up. Um, we're looking at Cal, we're looking at Houston, we're looking at Tulane, TCU possibly, um, a couple others, South Carolina. But, I mean, I don't – those and, and those are all schools who have had preliminary conversations. We're not talking like he's going to commit in the next like 72 hours. And and the one really specific thing in South Carolina is they really love Lenore Sellers. Um, and I, that doesn't exactly mean just because they've talked to Malachi that they're going to move on from Lenore. Right. And, and South Carolina also just got a commitment from AJ Swan, the, the Vanderbilt transfer. He actually uh, decided to go to LSU. That, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This is – how do you keep track of all this? <laughs> well, what, yeah, it's interesting. But, um, yeah, uh, he decided um, – he slept on a Sunday night and then made the decision yesterday to, to go to LSU. Uh, it's, it is amazing. And that is part of the problem trying to to cover the the high school recruiting side of it and the, mm. the transfer portal recruiting side of it because – like, I don't know how these coaches do it because they, they've got to juggle both of these things simultaneously because, like, A.J. Swan is, is a guy who has multiple years of eligibility left. Mm -hmm. So and now that, Shane Beamer has to go find a quarterback with multiple years of eligibility. Which, I mean, Malachi checks off a lot of those boxes. Yeah. yeah. it's it's. I was even talking to someone about this today, and I'm sure, like, they're like, so, like, what happens when a coach, like, loses a commitment? And I'm like, well – they can't get pissed off because what if they want to get that guy out of the portal in two years? Exactly. Yeah. That that's the thing more than ever. You got to be nice when that kid calls and says, I'm going somewhere else because you might be having that same conversation again a year later. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing that's so interesting to me now is, is we talk about this with the NIL and, you know, it feels like with the portal guy, he's less likely to hold you hostage than the, the guy out of high school. Well, yeah, the, the portal guy, right? Like the other layer to that is once they're on campus, they really can't go anywhere. I mean, we'll see. There's right. a lot of brewing right now. Pending federal court ruling, yeah. But um, as of right this moment, right, if you are if you transfer, you're not going to leave again. Um, so yeah, holding a school hostage just doesn't as happen as much. Now recruiting – that's when things can get a little interesting. Yeah. So we've got multiple quarterbacks still moving around. I'm curious, do you think Ohio State is going to take a quarterback out of the portal at this point, or do you think they, they stand pat with, with who they have on the roster? I am not anticipating them pursuing a quarterback in this 30-day cycle. Um, now, if some quarterbacks enter in the spring, I could definitely see – uh, Ryan Day and the Buckeyes definitely at least just checking out the market and seeing what's there. But I mean, they have Devin Brown, they have Lincoln Keenholz. They're really high on Lincoln Keenholz. And, and then you have Aaron Nolan coming in. Um, he's going to sign his NLI and arrive in January, from my understanding, tomorrow. Um, and, and they really love air. So yeah, I think they're confident with those three guys. But yeah, I mean, if you're Ryan Day, right, you just lost Kyle McCord. I think, I think you're definitely going to want to bring someone in who has experience. Um, I, I just don't think that's going to happen here. Um, DJU in Ohio State like had a very like preliminary like hey like haven't seen you in a while kind of conversation, <laughs> um, but like so we'll see how things shake out there at Florida State. Um, I'm, I'm I don't know if DJ would like to go to Ohio State, but there's definitely like a very quick simple conversation. What about Cam Ward? Uh, you know, goes to Miami, gets the Royal the Rick Ross treatment. And then goes to Florida State. When's the decision coming from him? You know, I've heard at the earliest midweek. Um, other people have told me they're expecting it a little bit closer to Christmas, so maybe over the weekend. Um, Andy, I can just tell you right now, I don't think anyone has the best feel about what Cam Ward is going to do. Um, you talk to some, 
Miami has a lot to offer, especially from an NIL perspective. Um, I think Florida State put together a great weekend for Cam and his family, and they also put together a pretty lucrative deal, from my understanding. Um, and my, this is just to like get in the Cam Warp sweet stakes. Like we're not talking about these like schools trying to like help with each other. Like that's just the situation right now in Cam Ward. Um, and then the NFL is still on the table and, and just the more and more conversations I continue to have, I, I really think the NFL is going to play a factor in this. And mm-hmm. even if he doesn't go, I think definitely, uh, going to the school that's going to like help his draft stock the most or play in a, a scheme that would be more similar to the NFL. I think that would definitely factor in. So a school we talked about the other day that, you know, we, we've mentioned they have very organized NIL and a coach who led them to a, a much better year in his first season than, than people anticipated. They just keep doing it. We were talking about Louisville the other day. Another one falls today, Monroe Mills, the mm-hmm. offensive tackle from Texas Tech. He, he he transferred from Oklahoma State, started for two years at Texas Tech, was an All Big 12 honorable mention. And I know what you're saying, like All Big 12 honorable mention. Think of it. How many Power Five All Conference honorable mention? starting offensive linemen are in the portal not many yeah not doesn't many. exist and so yeah. the, the, uh, all the programs who do have those are doing everything they can to retain those athletes uh, yeah yeah so louisville gets it i mean it feels like jeff brahm is really building a, a nice roster there through the portal we saw them do pretty well in recruiting his first cycle we'll see how they, they how they finish tomorrow but it really feels like they are are set to take off here. I mean, they got Corey Thornton, the UCF cornerback, who was really highly touted. Uh, you and I have talked about, about Colin Lacey and Jaquari Brooks, the two wide receivers, who are going to be electric on the outside for them. And they got Tyler Shuck coming in, the Texas Tech quarterback. There's a couple – some people have had a couple questions about him, but everything I continue to hear is that, that Jeff Brown loves him. He loves his upside. And, and Shuck just hasn't had a fully complete healthy year, and that's one of the right. things going against him. Yeah, it's a, it's almost like Michael Penix when when he went into the portal, because the the thought was, oh well, this guy has had three season ending injuries. How's he gonna? Is he ever gonna be healthy for? Well, he's been healthy two consecutive seasons at Washington, and you see how that goes. Yeah. Speaking of Washington, we have not gotten to talk about Will Rogers headed mm-hmm. to Washington from Mississippi State. How do you see that fitting? You know, I think there's probably a select handful of schools that would have really fit well with Will Rogers. And I think Kalen DeBoer's offense is a great fit. Um, I know everyone loves to talk about Will's crazy stats at Mississippi State. I think he's really talented. I also think that's a mix of the Mike Leach air raid offense. And I think that he can um, kind of mirror that at, at with the Huskies out in uh, the Big Ten now. Um, and, yeah, I, th- I think it's a good fit. Um, he was going to go on that same visit with Woody Marks, his, his running mm-hmm. back. Um, he has yet to make a decision. I've heard it's like USC and Washington. Um, but I know Washington's really excited about Will Rogers and what he brings to the table. And uh, I mean, they're going to go into the Big Ten with a quarterback who, who has SEC experience. Uh, that's something not a lot of teams are going to be able to tout at the quarterback position. Um, so, yeah, I think I think Washington got who they wanted. Well, if Dylan Johnson is any indication – Mississippi State transfers do do very well in Seattle. So we shall see. And congratulations to you, Pete, for saying Big Ten when you mentioned Washington. It's tripping us all up. Like, we keep wanting to say Pac-12. So kudos to you for getting that right. I'm going to have to practice it, though. Like, I've, I've done it multiple times now, and then I stop myself mid-sentence, and I'm like... Yeah, you're like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's, big, that's, they yeah. are going to Big Ten. Yeah, okay, yeah. There, there we go. So yeah. Texas and Oklahoma, I haven't really said SEC yet, so I'm waiting to stumble over that one. That feels like a more natural fit. The And then Colorado, having been in the Big 12 before, I feel like that's going to be easy. Arizona and Arizona State and Utah in the Big 12, I think is going to be a struggle for me at first. Utah is going to be really tough. Like, yeah. I feel like they are the Pac-12, but there is no more Pac-12. Listen, <laughs> players go in the transfer portal and so do the schools. Yep. Pete Nakos, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. See ya. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.